Yeah, I've been feeling I've been feeling the need to pray during this time more than ever. Cause my heart hasn't been exactly where I think it should be. Like it's been a lot of frustration in my heart. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be transparent. I don't know how many people how many people are watching. And I know a lot of people know me who don't, but I gotta be transparent because it, it is what it is. I was I've been really frustrated. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Because in January, every sermon you heard, whether it was at Tapestry, even on YouTube, on Instagram posts, it was almost like a universal message saying the year 2020, double vision. Trusted people that I, I heard them say this. I believed it. And then I hear it on Instagram. Then I hear it on Facebook. Then I hear it on, on YouTube. Other, other preachers. Same global message of double portion and the year 2020 of double vision. You have to be focused. 2020 vision. And then what happens? You're so focused and then you're paying attention and you focus on what you got to be focused on and then you get blindsided. Blindsided by situations that you have no control over. And I'm not just talking about what's going on in the world right now. We've all been blindsided at some point by some unexpected events, by some unexpected tragedy. Even we've even been blindsided by blessings, by good things. Like, I didn't see that coming. How great. But it seems like we only remember when we get blindsided by tragedy. So I was frustrated with this. I mean, God. Uh, we were so focused, I, my spirit was lifted. I don't want to say that I doubt God just because I don't want to hear it come out of my mouth. But the fact that I think that my heart wasn't where it was supposed to be when I was blindsided. And I had to go in prayer. I didn't even want to pray after, after, after that. I didn't feel like it. I just didn't feel like, like what is, what, what's the point? What was the point? I'm gonna be transparent. And I just started to pray and I, I was just praying. And out of all, out of all scriptures, out of all, out of, out of every book in the Bible, led to the one that I usually just bypass the most, Book of Job. I don't know if you guys ever read that, but you better put wisdom before you read this book. Let me tell you right now. And if you did start to read, I, I, because I don't know, it was, it was real tough for me, but God opened my eyes to something. And I started off with chapter one. I don't always start off with chapter one. I did in this book and I'm going to start off. Bear with me guys. I'm going to just hit you with five CCs of something strong and that's it, rather than 20 cc's of something watered down. It says, in the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless, upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he owned, you might want to write this down. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 5,000 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and a lot of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. He must have had a lot of servants if they didn't even put a number next to them. It just says a large number. That, that Stuff like that sticks with me. I fast forward a few verses. It says, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. Gave to him a give account to the Lord. And amongst the angels was the devil also came along with them. And God is like, Satan, where have you come from? And Satan says, I was... On the earth, roaming throughout it, back and forth on it. And then God asked Satan a question, perplexed. It had me, it had me scratching my head for like a week. It says, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He's blameless. He's upright. He is a man who fears God and he shuns evil. Must be hard to walk in Job's shoes. Seems like a pretty standard kind of guy. 
And then Satan says something to God. He says, does, does Job fear God for nothing? Like, do you think that he, he has faith in you? Do you think that he follows you? Do you think that he serves you for no purpose? And then Satan says, of course he does. You have put a hedge of, of protection around him and his household and everything he has. You have blessed the work of his hands so that the flocks and the herds are spread throughout the land. The devil says, but stretch out your hand, God. Take everything he has. I bet you he won't serve you anymore. I bet you he doesn't care about you anymore. I bet you he will curse you right to your face. What happens next rules more questions than anything. It says the Lord gave access to Satan. Give, give Satan access to Job. It says, fine. You can touch everything he has, but on him you cannot lay your finger. This is right there. I can... I can tell you what it means later on. It says, then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And it says, in his children's house, seven sons, three daughters eating. It says, a, men a messenger came up to Job. A messenger came up to Job. Let me get my paper here. These numbers are astronomical. The servant, the servant comes up to Job and says, the Sabaeans have come down and stolen 500 oxen. And they put your servants to the sword. I was the only one that escaped to tell you. And it says before the first servant fin finished saying the message to Job, a second servant approached as the first one is talking. And it says fire from God fell from heaven and burdened your 7,000 sheep, Job. And they put your servants to the sword. A third messenger comes as the second one is speaking and says, Job, there's been a raid and your 3,000 camels have been stolen and your servants have been killed. And again, a fourth messenger comes while the third one is talking and says a mighty wind from the desert came and blew through the four corners of the house where your children were. And it collapsed. Your house was destroyed, and your children, they're dead. The real man that existed, Job. And he has to deal with this death notification. Your children are dead. A wind blew and destroyed the house and killed his seven sons and three daughters. I've seen families who have gotten these notifications. I've seen mothers and fathers get notifications of the children's death. You can't imagine. It's unimaginable. And this is the first thing that Job does after this. It says, at this, Job got up, tore his, shaved his head, and threw himself on the ground in worship. He said, naked I came from the mother's womb, and naked I, naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. <clears throat> you know this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Easy to say amen from this side of the fence. Can you imagine being Job? I don't even, I can't even, I can tell you I probably would not have reacted like this. I don't even think my faith is to that level yet. Where he tore off his robe, shaved his head, and threw himself on the floor and worship. I, I I linger around in that part because it's, it's just a tragedy that hits home to every father, every, every anybody who knows anybody with children. And then it doesn't even stop there. It says on another day, the angels came again. Bear with me. It says the angels came again to give account to God, and the devil was amongst them and said, and the Lord said, Lord, where have you been? And the devil once again says, I was throughout the earth, walking back and forth on it. And you notice that Job maintained his integrity. And the devil says, skin for skin. I'm going to paraphrase. He says, God, I bet you that a man will give everything he has to save himself. I bet you everything he has that to save himself. 
he'll curse you. He'll put himself before you, God. God, he'll be, he'll be more worried about himself than about you, God. Once again, God gives Satan access to Job. And it says, so Satan went out to the presence of the Lord and went to Job. And it says, he was stricken with sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. If you read later on, you notice how they said that his sores were covered with worms. It says it was unbearable. Job says that he was afflicted with painful sores. It wasn't just something bad for the eyes. He was in great anguish. It said he laid in ashes. You know how much you got to be in? Where in verse 8, chapter 2, it says, Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. How much agony is that? And then his wife comes up and says, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. Won't you just curse him already and just die? He replied, you are like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And no, Job did not sin in what he said. I know you're probably thinking about his wife, what I was thinking initially, but then I, I had some mercy on her because she lost more than Job. She lost more than Job. I'll tell you why. She lost all the camels, all the oxen, all that wealth. She lost the house. She lost her children. And she's losing her husband. So don't blame her just yet. She was wrong, but don't blame her just yet. What is, what is, what is all this to say? Joe blindsided, message after message, bad news after bad news, all unexpectedly. He was just sitting in his children's house having a feast. I want you to notice something. The oxen were stolen. The servants were killed. The house was destroyed. His children were killed. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Why would Job use as God's puppet? I'm like, you give the devil access to this man if he's so uprighteous. And I do not lie, people. When I got it in my spirit and says, how else will the world learn? That you can still maintain your faith through hard times. How else? Do I make something up in the Bible? Do I just speak in parables? I had to use this one man for the well-being and for the maintaining of faith of fellow believers from now into the future. I, from, at first, I just thought God was a sadist. I thought he just wanted to see Job in pain. I thought he just wanted to prove a point to the devil till I realized God doesn't have to prove no point to the devil. Devil knows his place. That's why he's roaming around aimlessly. But what struck me more about Job is that some of us are going along the same path that Job has gone. Blindsided. Blindsided sometimes. Just had Job's oxen and camels and and, rest, and, and sheep were destroyed, which represent wealth. Maybe your wealth has been being depleted throughout this season or at some season. Maybe the way Job lost his, lost his children, which represent his joy, maybe your joy has been killed when you get blindsided by a hard time. Maybe your joy has been killed. Or how Job's health was affected. I mean, afflicted with painful sores who weren't to the point where he had to use broken pottery. Maybe throughout this season, your health has been affected. Or like his wife, maybe a significant person in your life health has depleted, has been affected, or they have been infected. The devil knew that he would try Job, that he would get Job to, 
to discourage him in order to stop believing. I'm telling you right now, you can get blindsided, face tragedy, go through hard times, and still maintain your faith. That's why God keeps saying access to Job, to show us that if Job can do it, then we can do it. Do it. Another human. Another human. It could, it is possible to maintain your faith and your trust in God throughout hard times. A lot of us believe that once we follow Christ that everything's gonna be perfect. We constantly wanna understand what's happening. We constantly wanna understand how God is working. Let's say, he's, let's say he spoke, came down from heaven right now and told you exactly what he's doing. I'm not talking about what's going on in the world, just in general. This is what I'm doing, guys. I guarantee you, we will not believe Jesus. I'm 100% sure. I'll bet the house. I'll bet Edwin's house. We will not believe him. How about how cook? My accent doesn't allow me to. One five. It says, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am doing something that you would not believe even if I told you. Even if he told you, you wouldn't believe him. But you will be amazed. Maintaining your faith through hard times. Faith through hard times. And I'm almost finished. Job had three friends come up to him throughout this, throughout his affliction. They try to say that God is punishing him for some sin that he did. Job, you should. Um, I guarantee you, you sinned. That's why you're being punished. They're supposed to console him. What kind of friends are those? They came up to him and said, no, you know what? Bad things happen to people who do bad. God is punishing you. That's what his three friends said. Job maintained his innocence. I'll tell you right now, God does not punish. He does not punish. We cannot keep blaming God for certain tragedies. Look what it says. It says, when it, when the, when it's, it says, while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire from God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants. And I am the only one that escaped to tell you. It says the fire from God fell. It wasn't the fire from God. Satan was given access to Job. It was Satan who did it. It was Satan who sent the wind. It was Satan who sent that disease. It was Satan who sent the fire from God. But other people are saying it was from God. God is not to blame. God is not to blame. I'm not here to defend God. God can defend himself. But I'm telling you what I've been through because I almost started to blame God. And I'm reading this message and I'm like, fire from God fell. It wasn't from God. It was from Satan. It was the enemy attacking. Somebody's listening right now. Who you trusted God and got blindsided, but you blamed him for it. You blamed him for it. Or, or to the other person, somebody else told you God is to blame. Curse God. You were such a believer. But somebody told you that for this to happen, curse God. Forget God. Forget that walk with God, man. He's the one who did this. Are you going to maintain your integrity? Some people listen to that voice. Some people stopped following God because they thought that they were being punished for something wrong that he did. 
or he or she did. God is not punishing you. God did not punish you when that happened. He is not to blame. Let us sink in. Let us sink in. He is not to blame. And through all this, still Joel maintained, maintained his integrity, maintained his faith. He had many questions for God. He had so many questions for God. He wanted to prove his innocence to God. And then God spoke and said, Job, do you realize that I have all the wisdom that I know exactly what I'm doing? Like, Job, was it you that told the waves when they were created? Waves, this is how far you shall come. He says, Job, were you there when I put the stars in order in space, Job? Job, were you there? You're going to tell me, guys, listen. Sometimes we think we know more than God. Maybe it's just me. I'll be transparent. Sometimes I think that I have more control over my plans than God does. Well, God, why? Oh, God, that was a perfect timing. God, that was a perfect opportunity. And I get frustrated and I read this passage and I realize, guys, I am not smarter than God. I am not even close. I don't know how the foundations of the earth were made. I don't know how to tell waves, this is how far you shall come. I, I would have probably made a disaster or put stars in the skies. I don't know how the birds fly. God is all knowing. He has all the wisdom. He is the creator, the alpha, and the omega. I'm not saying that you don't have questions. But we need to humble ourselves and realize that God is in control. God is in control. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. He came that you may have life and have it to the full. Why have you lost, why, why have you lost trust in God? Because some of the possessions you owned are slowly diminishing. Maybe you have lost a family member, just like Joe did. I can't blame you for your initial reaction of blaming God and not trusting. It is very difficult, but it could be done. But why, why does God want my full trust? He wants you and I to trust him so much because hard times are never going to end. Trouble will always come. Trouble will always come on this earth. I wrote down the exact scripture somewhere, but I'm afraid I might have to paraphrase it. And hopefully I won't butcher it. But it says there will be trouble in this world. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Now we're going to go back to where the double portion that I was talking about in January and then having this, 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 this prophecy that every pastor online and every prayer warrior was saying, 2020 vision and double, the year of double portion. Yeah, right. Right? I mean, after a while, I started realizing, like, yo, this has to be a message from God if it's a global message, if it's a global vision. And then James chapter 1, verse 12-22 says, Happy are those who remain faithful under trials. 
because when they succeed in passing such a test, they will receive as their reward in life, which God has promised to those who love him. I'll read it again. I'm going to read that again. Let it sink in, like really focus. Let it sink in. Happy are those who remain faithful under trials. Trials are never going to stop. Don't let nobody feed you that nonsense. Happy are those who remain faithful under trials because when they succeed in passing such a test, they will receive as their reward in the life which God has promised to those who love him. They will receive as their reward the life which God has promised them. They will receive as their reward the life which God has promised. Through all this, Job, Job maintained his integrity. He did not curse God. He did question God, but he did not sin by, by cursing him to his face. The ones that sinned were the ones that were saying lies about God, saying that God punishes those that sin. God will discipline, but he will not punish. It's a big difference. Solitary confinement, that's punishment. Sitting down and telling my son, don't do that again. This is how it's done. That's discipline. It's a big difference. His three friends said it was your fault, God. Job maintained his integrity. Again, he had questions to Job. He, Job had questions to him. So when God finally spoke, he says, your friends committed a sin. Your friends have sinned. You know what God did? God didn't punish them. It's in Job chapter 43 somewhere, I think. I think it's 43. I've read this so slow because it says your friends sin by saying that I'm the one that punishes. They sinned. So if God punishes those who sin, how come they didn't get punished? Instead, he said, Job, you better pray for them. Pray for your friends, Job. And it says, as soon as Job prayed for his friends. I'll read chapter 42, verse 10. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortune and gave him twice as much fortune as he had before. Double portion. My, pe my friends, my people, my, my everything, meeting, oh yeah, tengo español se lo voy a decir. The promise that was made in January by Pastor Anthony, Pastor Zon, uh, the, the global message that was heard about double portion and 2020 being a year of vision and focus and double portion still stands, but you must go through these trials and maintain your faith throughout every trial, and you will have the reward that God has promised you in James. Maintain your faith through hard times. You will be rewarded. What kind of God that punishes makes you that kind of offer, man? The prophecy of 2020, double portion still stands. He gave Job twice as much as he had. I'm telling people here, maintain your faith. Not only because God is good and he is all knowing and he knows more than you. Humble yourself, man. He does. But he's also a rewarding God. You know what's crazy? I won't, I won't forget the things I got myself into, the trouble I got myself into. But you know what I'll forget? I'm quick to forget how God was with me throughout that time. Quick to forget. Lord, I just want to pray, Jesus, that for those who have lost trust in God, Lord Jesus, for those who thought that God is punishing them, for those who think that God has punished them in the past, has taken away the things that they've loved or the people that they've loved, Lord, please let them realize this revelation that it was not you that came to steal, kill, and destroy, Lord God. Because there will be trouble in this world, Lord Jesus. 
Lord, allow us to repent, Jesus, just like Job's friends. Lord, forgive us, Lord Jesus, for blaming you for things. All this time, we thought it was you that we had to blame. It was an easy way out. Or we listened to the wrong person that gave us the wrong advice about you, God. I used to follow you. I used to follow you wholeheartedly, Jesus. I am drawing near to you, God. Hearing this message has made me realize, God, that you have never walked away from me, but it was me that walked away from you, Lord God. And we know that you wait for me with open arms, Lord God, because you will leave your 99 to go find that one Lord sheep, Lord God. And here I am today. I'm opening up my heart, Lord God, right now to you once again to fully trust you, Jesus. Thank you for this revelation today, Lord God. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for the Holy Spirit to help us, Lord, to, to, to comfort us, to counsel us, Lord Jesus, as we go through trouble, as we go through trials that seem to never cease, messenger after messenger after messenger. God, but I will still worship you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.